Ho, ho, ho! Welcome to It Was the Night Before Christmas Eve. It's nearly Christmas. It is nearly Christmas. My goodness, goodness, goodness. I guess we're going to do a um, special something tomorrow night. Is that... I have no idea what that's going to look like, but yeah. Yeah. So we'll tune, we'll, we'll just pop in for a short time and give you a blessing, whatever yeah. that might look like. Yeah. So we'll, you know, we're not sure exactly what time we'll be doing it. So we'll just do it. And then you can just kind of, you'll, I guess, what, they get alerts when, yeah. when we do something? We'll try so. to do it around 630 just because that's a time that you're used to us popping in. But, but no guarantees. No guarantees. <laughs> it is. It will be the night before Christmas. So. It will be the night before Christmas. And tonight is the night before the night before Christmas. It is. So. It is. Let's hear your... It, this is a, this is another <clears throat> one. This is a different one. He can't hold his neck. You know, oh, I've just okay. got to... Cute. Yeah, he's better looking than I am. He's cute. You're cute too. It's almost Christmas, so oh, stupid jokes. <laughs> yes, I know. Oh, what, what, what's that? Uh, what's that one your friend told us? Um, where does a snowman keep his money? In the snowbank. Yes. Ha ha. I don't remember the other one. I don't. Know. It was. It wasn't bad. I don't. But know. I can't remember what it was. So. Uh, what kind of a nut doesn't have a shell? That one? No, a donut. Oh. Yeah. Did you hear the joke about the pepperoni pizza? No. Never mind, it was too cheesy anyway. What kind of ice cream is bad at tennis? Soft serve. Not bad. Those were not bad. Not they're not good, but they weren't bad. <laughs> That's true. They weren't good. These are. I mean, these are supposed to be stupid jokes. <coughs> all right. Hi, Cheryl. Uh, hello. Uh, I might. All you got? I guess that is all I got. That's yeah. all he's got. Well, good thing because I'm going to need all the time I can get. I want to share with you this evening. <clears throat> How to work with your spirit guides, spirit animal guides. How fun is that? You know, a lot of us have done processes where we acquire our spirit animals. And then that's like, okay, so what? Now what? Well, I'm going to walk you through a process this evening. Three processes. And each, each process that we do is going to have three spirit animals. So by the time we're done, you'll know how to work with nine spirit animals. <clears throat> the first thing I want you to do is realize that I'm going to give you specific spirit animals to choose. These may or may not be your spirit animals, but I want to give you the concept and the principles so that you can utilize your spirit animals to your best interest. I mean, they're not just here to hang out and say, ooh, I got a frog or I got a, a walrus. Who cares? You know, they're here for a specific purpose and they're here to assist us and help us. But if we don't know how to work with them, they can't do their job. And we can't be open to it. We can't perceive their assistance if we don't have an awareness of that. So this process is here to help you with that. <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do <clears throat> is we're gonna pick uh, or select or choose uh, a feeling that you might currently have. And from that, I'm going to tell you what spirit animal is here to help you and what 
they bring to you and how to perceive that and how to receive that and how to use that. All right, sound good? All right, so the first thing you wanna do is just be here. Wherever you are, just be there. So just notice your body, notice your feet touching the ground or your backside in the chair. Just notice that you're here. And at the same time, I'd like you to notice that you're connected. Just because you're not paying attention to your bottom in the chair doesn't mean your bottom's not in the chair. It just means you're not paying attention. Just because you're not paying attention and noticing that you're connected to divine source doesn't mean you're not connected. It just means you're not noticing in that moment. So just notice and realize that that connection is there. It is through this divine connection that the spirit animals arrive for our benefit. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'd like you to do first is just take, a, take an inventory of where you are. You know, we're going through some really challenging times and the holidays don't make it any easier. Um, and sometimes the holidays are this beautiful, blessed experience and wonderful event. And then sometimes they're just make it worse because <laughs> we have expectations of what we'd like to see happen and maybe that doesn't happen. Uh, so there's disappointments and sorrows or, or past uh, experiences coming up to the surface that weren't as pleasant as we would like them to have been. And so they can kind of cloud or filter our experience of the here and now. So what are you experiencing right now? What feeling are you experiencing? And I'm going to list just three. There's a couple of identifiers in each one, but pick one of these if you would because each one signifies a specific spirit animal that has come to assist you. Now, what's really fun about this process is all through this week, well, since Sunday, <clears throat> I've been nudged, uh, awakened in the middle of the night, and, and don't forget to tell them this, and don't forget to tell them that, and don't forget to show them this, and we're right here, we're ready. They're, they're eager to work with you. So I hope you have a sense of that eagerness because it certainly is on their part uh, their willingness and their eagerness to come to you and be of assistance. So I'm going to express three different emotions and pick one of those. And then that's going to lead you into which spirit animal is going to come to you. Okay. Make sense. <clears throat> so are you feeling isolated or lonely? Or do you feel like you're giving yourself away feeling powerless? Or do you feel a bit overwhelmed? What are you feeling right now? Which of those three, there may be other feelings there, but which of those three can you say, yeah, I, I, can, I can claim that one for now. And knowing that the spirit animal is gonna help you move beyond that feeling, all right? So again, is it feeling isolated and lonely, giving yourself away or powerless, or feeling overwhelmed, okay? If you chose feeling isolated or lonely, the spirit animal that's coming to you right now is wolf. Can you have a sense of that wolf appearing for you? Whatever color it might be, whatever male or female, doesn't matter, but the energy of wolf is coming to you. So visualize wolf in your mind, what that might look like for you. And notice the feeling that wolf is bringing to you. This wolf is bringing to you the wolf pack, feeling connected, not isolated, not lonely, but connected. And even if they're out hunting, they're still connected. They can howl and communicate from pack to pack even. So this is, this is allowing you to feel connected. So that wolf has this deep sense of connection and is bringing that connection to you. Feel that. What does that feel like? Maybe this wolf is sitting next to you and you can pet the wolf or you can, can in some way touch this wolf or, or have a sense of that, whether it's communicated through eye contact or whether it's communicated through your touch, touching of this, or just heart to heart or energy to energy. Feel this energy. And what this is bringing to you is a sense of belonging. You have a sense of that? Can you feel that? 
beautiful, powerful. Now, if you feel like you have been giving yourself away or you're powerless, what is coming to you now is horse, the energy of horse. Whatever color the horse is, whether male or female, doesn't matter. Let this horse come close to you, visualize it in your mind. And as you see this horse, I want you to notice the power of your muscles. And notice that horses can carry us far further than we can go by ourselves. Even our vehicles is called horsepower, is it not? Because they have the power to move us beyond our own capabilities. So have a sense, a deep sense, whether it's eye to eye contact or whether just touching the horse's shoulder, feeling their, their musculature, uh, or maybe you jump on the back of this horse and, and go for a ride and you feel like you're, you're riding with the wind. The feeling that this horse is bringing to you um, is, is a sense of being capable you're capable of choosing your own path. You're capable of finding your way. You're capable of getting from here to there. So instead of being overwhelmed or feeling like you're giving yourself away, this feeling of capable is being imbued or gifted to you. Take that on and feel how that works for you. Now, if you were feeling overwhelmed, the spirit animal that's coming for you specifically is eagle. Notice this eagle. Perhaps you're seeing it circling above. Perhaps it's here close by and you have, a, have an opportunity to look in its eyes or maybe touch its feathers or notice its coloration. Just notice that the eagle is bringing you perspective. It's giving you the ability to rise above difficulties and it's, the eagle is carried by unseen forces. And so it brings to you the energy of vision. And vision transforms uh, us incredibly. Not just what we see and what we experience, but what's beyond this. And that's the energy of the eagle, granting us the power of perception to perceive our world in a different way, to perceive ourself in a different way, to, to perceive that uplifting energy that maybe we couldn't see or feel before because we were experiencing that other emotion. How does that feel? You feel the truth of that? Some of you took all of them on and I think that's wonderful. Uh, some of you stuck with your specific one and, and that's wonderful too. Whichever way you chose is just fine. This allows you the understanding of knowing that it's imperative to know where you are know what spirit animal would help you move beyond that, then you can call them to you and you can receive the gift of their presence, the gift that they bring to you. Their essence is their gift. Their essence is the power that they grant to you. Shall we try another one? Let's try another round. This time I'd like you to, to choose a current attitude you may be having. Not necessarily positive, but we can choose one anyway. <clears throat> Are you feeling irritated or frustrated? There's a lot to be irritated or frustrated about, isn't there? Do you feel like there's too much pain in the world or are you feeling judgmental about that? Too much pain in the world or feeling judgmental that it should be different than it is? Or are you feeling disconnected or burdened? Which of those rings true for you? And let's go back and, and see what spirit animal will come to assist us in moving beyond those experiences, shall we? Beyond those attitudes. <clears throat> if you were feeling irritated or frustrated, the spirit animal that's here for you is a rabbit. Now, notice, rabbits have big ears. And they're very, very soft. So allow yourself to perceive that and experience this rabbit energy and this rabbit energy allows you to wait and listen and soften. Do you have a sense of that? Maybe you want to scoop this rabbit up and hold it in your arms in, in an imaginary way. 
or, or in your imagination, allow yourself to scoop this, ki this uh, bunny up and hold it. And this rabbit, the energy of rabbit, the spirit en energy of rabbit is bringing you peace. Can you feel that? How beautiful is that? And the more you contact you have with this spirit animal, the more you feel that peacefulness wash over you. It's a gift. It's a gift from divine source using this spirit animal to communicate that to you, to bring that to you. If you feel like there's too much pain in the world or you feel judgmental about how things are, you don't like that. Um, the spirit animal that's coming to you now is owl. And the owl has the ability to see through the darkness. Yes, there's darkness in the world. There always has been and there always will be until we are no more. But in the meantime, we can have the spirit energy of owl, which gives us the ability to see more and to move effortlessly through our lives and through the darkness. So the owl is bringing to us awareness higher level of awareness. You have a sense of that. Can you feel that? Can you speak to this owl and sense this communication back that grants you uh, this awareness as you take on and you claim this ability to see through the darkness? Now all of a sudden, you're not seeing so much darkness anymore. You're seeing what's there beyond the darkness. Are you not? How powerful is that? That's a tool we could use every day, is it not? I believe so. Feeling disconnected or burdened? Elephant is here for you. Elephants have such a sweet, wonderful energy, but they're mostly about remembering who you really are. You know, elephants, uh, an elephant never forgets. An elephant will walk past the bones of, of fellow elephants that have fallen and they'll fondle them and they'll know them. They'll recognize those, those bones. They remember. So the energy of elephant is here to help you remember who you really are. Your love. So the energy they bring to you is this energy of being carried, uplifted. You might even want to get up on an elephant's back and see it's a different perspective from here and you have a have a clear sense of who you really are you're not disconnected or burdened and you have help with those burdens now, elephants pack a ton of stuff because they're they're strong they're sturdy and they have this ability to support you and remind you who you really are, the sacredness of who you really are. And how does that feel? Don't we feel more, more connected and less burdened when we know we're sharing that with this beautiful creature that is so aware? Make sense? Now, how did that feel? Feel good? Now, on Sunday, we talked about having courage and <clears throat> returning to our innocence and joy. So the first three was about re restoring our courage. And the second three were about restoring our innocence. And the last one is our joy, restoring our joy. We could use that, couldn't we? All right. So <clears throat> here's a current experience, three current experiences. I'd like you to pick one. First one is resentful, bitter, or angry. Second was, one is adrift or confused. And the third one is fearful or shut down, which most fits for you right now. It's not how you always are, but maybe for this moment, you can experience this. Resentful, bitter, or angry, adrift or confused, fearful or shut down. <clears throat> if you chose bitter, resentful, and angry, the spirit animal that's here for you now is a butterfly. Notice the butterfly as it comes to you. What color is your butterfly? What kind of butterfly do you receive? And notice this butterfly and have a sense of it. And the energy it's bringing to you is the ability to taste the sweetness of life. 
Things may not always be the way you want them to be. And then you can flip to something else. Check it out somewhere else. Notice another thing. Move to a different state of mind. Shift your focus. All of these things are butterfly energy and they bring us freedom. So allow yourself to just maybe hold your hand out in your mind's eye and hold your butterfly. And as you're experiencing that and noticing this butterfly and you have a sense of the sweetness of life that it experiences, allow yourself to just take that on and feel a sense of freedom, freedom from all of that. You know, and you don't have to carry that if you don't want to. You can allow yourself to tap into the energy the butterfly is bringing for you. How cool is that? Feeling adrift or confused? The spirit animal that's coming to you is a mythic creature. This one is a unicorn. And this unicorn is bringing you the mythical energy, mystical, mythical energy because it exists outside of the realms of reality, but you can imagine it, can you not? So in your imagination, it has energy. And the energy of the unicorn is this sweetness that does no harm, is very powerful and yet gentle, and it brings you the energy of insight. You can mystically see beyond what's here and now. And you can have a perception that transcends the experience of feeling adrift or confused. It also has a little bit of that horse energy where there's these powerful muscles to it that can carry you. So how, how wonderful is that? Double bonus on that particular one. If you were feeling fearful and shut down, the spirit animal that's here for you is a puppy. Puppies aren't shut down, they're just open. They just are playful. They uh, don't really know their limits, and that's okay because they're learning. And so if you're fearful and shut down, there's no opportunity for learning. There's no opportunity for growth. There's no opportunity for joy. So a puppy is bringing this energy of awakening, and we can awaken with joyful response to the world. So it encourages you to do something fun. A puppy finds everything fun. Oh, shoelace, that's fun. Maybe not supposed to chew on that, but it's fun, is it not? Oh, look, there's food. Let me lay in the food. Let me spread the food around. Let me chase kibbles all over the floor. Puppies just find fun in everything. So this awakening energy brings joy back into your life. Do you have a sense of that? Can you feel that? And puppies have that, you know, lick, 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 and they just are so cute and they follow you around. There's just this acceptance and loving energy uh, that allows joyfulness back into your heart. Do you have a sense of that? So those are our nine spirit animals and what they can do for you and how they can assist you. Now, if you have a spirit animal that's different than these nine, Here's the process. Notice what that spirit animal is significant for. What are they known for? Bears are known for their protectiveness. Um, geese are known for their ability to return home. Uh, whales are known for their song, their soul song, and their ability to, to travel distances and go to the depths. So notice what they're good for and when you connect in with your spirit animal, it's more than, yeah, well, there it is. Connect in, eye to eye contact or touching their being with your, with your imagination, with your awareness. This allows you to tap into that specific energy that they imbue and they will share it with you. You can tap into it, you can feel it and you can let it strengthen and fortify you. How does that feel? Do you have a sense of that? You know, it's one thing to get a, a spirit animal or you have a sense of one or, or one comes to you in your imagination or you keep seeing one over and over and over either in a magazine or in real life or whatever and you go, oh, there must be something significant to that. There is. 
But it's more than just, oh, I have this or I have that. It's, it's, it's not just a matter of ownership. It's a matter of what energy they are bringing to you and granting you right here, right now, to help you in whatever's going on in your world. So if you have any questions about your specific spirit animal and what it might be doing to help you, first thing you need to, first thing I'd like you to look at is where are you? Because even if you have a spirit animal, it's not going to show up in your world if you're not going to use it, if it has no, no value for you. So in other words, if you have, like I have the, um, I have the buffalo, and I have the gecko, and I have uh, um, the snow tigers. So it doesn't. If I'm not in a needing position, they kind of stay in the background. But if I'm in a situation where I need their energy, that's when they're going to show up. So if you had the experience of a bird flying right across your windshield just as you're driving along, that's a spirit animal connecting in, saying, "I'm here. I'm here for you." Use my energy. I'm here to gift that to you. So you can tune in and see, well, what kind of bird was that? And what energy are they bringing? And it helps to know where you are, where I am. What, what is amiss in my life? And know that they're here to supplement our spiritual experience so that we're whole again. We can reclaim that wholeness. So if you have any questions about your spirit animal, type that in, send it to Phil. Phil, give me a call, and I will be happy to address those for you. <clears throat> in the meantime, it's imperative for you, if you'd like, if you'd like to feel those energies, be with your spirit animal. Uh, we're only going to briefly touch on it right here and now. When we're finished with this, when you have a chance, maybe as you're going to bed tonight, Take some time and just sit with your spirit animal. You don't know what they came for. You can figure it out or look at it, ponder that, or ask them. They can communicate to you. They can communicate to your awareness. And they can specifically tell you what it is they came to bring you. Maybe it's hope. Maybe it's joy. Maybe it's... Um, peace or maybe it's just seeing yourself in a new way make sense and they'll be here as long as they they feel you need them and then when you're no longer and having a necessity for them they'll go on back to source some spirit animals stay with you all the time they're yours they came here to ch they've chosen you um, the energy is compatible for you, and it's an energy you can rely on and lean on all the time. All the time. Have that, that sense of their presence to strengthen and encourage you in whatever capacity that might be. So let me know if you have any questions, and I will be happy to chat with you about that. I don't haven't seen any yet. Let me see if Mr. Phil has picked up anything yet. Any questions or comments that I need to address, Mr. Phil? Not really. Okay. Well, let's call it an evening then. We'll, we'll wrap this up. I hope you've enjoyed that. This is... Nobody nobody talks about this. Nobody talks about, oh, I got the spirit guide and that spirit animal, but this is, this is how to really use them and allow them to be of use. They are so eager to be of assistance. So please utilize this process as best you can. If you have any questions, be sure and just let me know. I'm happy to help you in this. All right, Mr. Field. We're... Let's hurry up. I want to go have eggnog. Ooh, we have eggnog. Maybe. Maybe. Hey, Cynthia. So. Hey, Terry. You are very welcome. Glad you, glad you participated in this. And uh, hope to see you on Sunday. I've got more, another superpower I want to share with you. Anyway, you're still connected in. Bring it into your heart space, energy to your left hand, left hand to right hand, Ooh. back to your heart space. Jan's there. Hey, how you doing, Jan? Nice to see ya. All right. <clears throat> you got me off track, Phil. Sorry. <laughs> I'll get back online and I'll say hi to everybody here in a minute. But yep. 
going to make. So bringing that energy in, one hand to the next, back to your heart space that connects that circuit. And now as that circuit is connected between your hands is a space, but this space is, allows that energy to build and to grow. And as that energy is building and growing, you might even be able to feel a little resistance between your hands here. That's that energy building. And this is yours to utilize with your intent. You can choose what to do with this. I would suggest for this evening that we share this with somebody that might could use healing or comfort or encouragement. And have a cup of eggnog. <laughs> Him and the eggnog. So there might be someone in your circle of influence. You know who that might be. And just hold them in your heart space, hold them in your awareness, and send this energy to them. And they'll share in that. And then sweep them off. You want any psychic backwash, just fresh energy back from the divine source into your heart space. Left hand to right hand, right hand back to your heart space. And let that energy build again. Now this time with this energy building, I don't know if you can feel it or not, but it's pretty ramped up here. Is yours ramping up? I'm just thinking about eggnog. Yes, of course it is. So as that energy has ramped up, place in this energy from your heart space gratitude. Gratitude for these spirit animals that have come to assist you. And with that gratitude, this energy is amplified, is it not? And now, bringing that energy back into your heart space so you can be of service. You can be a blessing in your world. That's what wholeness brings. May your life be a prayer. God bless. And we will see you tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening. Just a little, just a little bit. A little bit mm -hmm. of a Merry Christmas blessing. Until then, be well. And have a cup of eggnog. <laughs>